My name is Jordi Lunn. I'm 33 years old and I live in Victoria, BC. My first memory of being on a bike, I remember my dad like getting me on this little, it was a little green bike and uh, no training wheels or anything. I'd never been on a bike before. He just kind of sent me down the street on a bit of a hill and give me a push and let me go. Jordy, Jordy's a super unique guy on a bike. Like he, he just has like a really strong personality and when he's focused, he puts 110% into whatever he's doing. He was the first Canadian to break the top 20. I believe he got 11th at Mount St. Anne once. He was basically Canada's hope for downhill at the time. He just has this lack of fear in his riding. He's never a stranger to a bike. He can hop on a bike after not riding for six months and just be at the exact same level, go try the same tricks, and it's really incredible to see. Growing up, I have two brothers, uh, an older Craig and a younger Jarrett. My big inspirations were mainly my brothers, like the three of us riding together and then our other buddy, Ryder, was always, he was always around. He traveled like those first races with us. We all got into racing together. I feel like it was through BMX and Craig wanting to mountain bike. When we all finally started mountain biking, we were going to the, like, the local Parksville races and then the Island Cup races. We did that for the first fall. The next summer, we went straight into going to BC Cup races. Mom and Dad, they bought a trailer. We put bunk beds in it and we toured around the BC series that next summer. We all did pretty well. The next summer, like, Craig and I and Dad went over for the few, first few Canada Cups, uh, one in Quebec, one in Ontario, and I think I won them both. From there, that year I qualified for Worlds. Like, first year at Worlds, I got on the Santa Cruz team in the States. Yeah, my best place at a World Cup was Mount St. Anne, 2003. I was 11th there. I think Steve Pete won, and I think the gap from him to me was two and a half seconds. I think before, his path was kind of laid out in front of him. You're racing. This is your diet. This is your training. This is what you're doing. And then once he was over racing and the Santa Cruz thing went away, he got more into the free ride side of things. And I think uh, the project with Ride to the Hills really opened his eyes to that. But once he realized that uh, the movies were happening and it was probably a lot more fun to do that as opposed to be focused on one race on one day and that's all that matters. It's just like your world totally expands, your eyes open. It's re really important to step out of your comfort zone. And like, you know, even today when we, we hit that road gap, like I knew I had ridden it before. Going into it, I was confident. But then you get to the top of something like that and, you, and you're like, you can't help but to think, well, I'm dropping 20 or more feet, moving at such speed, like if I make a mistake, there's rocks there, tree there, like, it could go wrong pretty quick. Getting out of your comfort zone regularly just kind of prepares you for all those situations where you, you have to kind of step up quicker than you'd like to. And, but I've gone into stuff like going to throw a trick at a contest where I was like, okay, I got 10% chance of landing this, but there's people around, everyone's yelling, I'm going. Oh, fuck. Yeah, it looks like I landed, blew up. Front flipped for about 20 feet. 
I think Jordy's a workhorse. When he puts his mind to it, he really works really hard in anything. It, he'll like grind harder than almost anyone to to get a shot that he's struggling for. I think he's a, an amazing bike rider, and I'm super proud at how hard he worked at that. But he's an amazingly well-rounded bike handler. He's a gladiator, which I think is pretty cool. Like. Not many people could get up from some of the stuff he's still getting up from. I'd say that my top five injuries, like number one's got to be multiple concussions. Like I think it's up to between 12 and 15. When I'm weighing out the risks in a line, I never think of like the possible injury outcome. I think, well, you know, I weigh out where I could fall in the risks and, and chances of that, but I don't really ever dig deep into it like that. Okay. I feel like my, my best trick over the past bunch of years for staying positive and focused has been my fitness. I had a bunch of years in my, I'd say mid 20s, where I got really out of shape and, and like really unmotivated. It was a bunch of years where I kind of lost focus and in the end, like I finally realized it the first year I moved to Alberta. I first went to Alberta because I needed some work over the winter and yeah and so I started out running a shower truck so anytime there was acid on a on a well site to, to throw into the earth I had to be there with with a shower in case anyone got acid on them so I, I was a shower boy. Being away from family like I remember the first winter out there I had to, I had to work through Christmas that was I don't know tough for me like growing up in like a pretty tight family. Jordy's a bit like, a, he's a presence. First time I met him, like, it's like, damn, this guy's like top of the game. He's pretty gnarly. And he's like, hey, how's it going? <laughs> Super Jordy, <laughs> like light voice. And I was just like, I did not see that coming. <laughs> I'm into tattoos for sure. I don't ever, I feel like I'm intimidating anyone, and I shouldn't be. First time I saw him, I thought he was a pretty intense dude. He was in a full racer kit at um, the Hammerfest race. It was a BC Cup, and obviously he won. He won by like 10 seconds. He looked pretty intimidating. Like he had a goatee, he was like full racer size, like 160 pounds, and I was 12 or 13 years old. I was like, that's Jordy. I just like people to know me as approachable and happy. How I would describe Jordy to someone who doesn't know them as like an outgoing guy who is super easy to get along with. He'd be like a leopard in a pack of penguins. Just like has ultimate flair, but he's just a big pussy cat. Going uh, golfing with uh, Jordy Lund. He just did a snap hook into the rebarb. <laughs> Molly, Molly on the green. I think we'll, let's just take a couple of bogues and call it a day. Yeah. Knock her in the cut. Just for a double. Call her a day. This was advice from a small kid at Parkgate Skate Park in North Van. I was, I was just taking a break and he said, you know, life is like a Ferrari. It just goes by too fast. <laughs> and he said, I say that before every hard trick I'm going to try. <laughs> I get my drive from when I was younger and like coming up, I still like get that same feeling of just learning. And I feel like when that, that feeling of, of learning something new and the satisfaction that goes along with that goes away, like that's when I might stop. I, I don't think I'll ever stop.